MCCLA. Welcome to the live broadcast of Metropolitan Community Church, Los Angeles. So we call on God as Creator, as Savior, and as Holy Spirit to be with us this morning, to gather us as God's people and to illuminate our pathway, to enable us to hear this morning the life, the way, and the truth of the God who is present and who is with us. 
And so in that spirit, O oh God, we gather for worship, God in three persons, Holy Trinity, expressed to us through the name that lives in our hearts. May we therefore worship in one accord, in unity and in love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you this morning. Please be seated. You know, when I first arrived in Los Angeles, I know that's a long time ago now, but somebody said, if you don't like the weather, just wait around for 20 minutes and it will be changed. Um, and it certainly does know how to change um, in just a quick, short spell of a time. Yesterday, I don't know what uh, temperature we had yesterday, but I think it was about in the early 90s. Um, and here we are this morning, a lot cooler than that. Um, so, um, as I say, just wait around and the weather will change again uh, back one more time. But what a joy to welcome, maybe a little cooler outside, but definitely warm in spirit inside as we gather one with each other in the name of all that is holy. We welcome you to worship. Uh, we welcome each and every one of us, especially those of us who are worshiping with us for the very first time this morning. We know that you have a choice in worshiping communities, but we are so glad that you're here this morning. Although as I look around, I think we've all been here at least once before. Um, so if you are for here for the very first time, if you would just raise your hand and keep it up for a moment so that we can welcome you from South Africa. That's... This is uh, Laura Law's nephew um, who is with us, and so we are delighted to welcome you to worship this morning um, here in Los Angeles. Uh, as you'll see, the ushers will be passing out the welcome tablets in just a few moments, and we would invite every single one of you to take a moment to sign in for us. Uh, let us know that you've been present with us so that we may remain connected one with each other. Uh, it's important that we know that you've been present. It's also important for us to know how we may be able to minister effectively one with the other. So if you are in need of pastoral care, um, or if you would need to speak with a member of the staff this morning, uh, please uh, do check that box so that we can follow up with you this morning. Uh, I apologize if I was a little echoey this morning. I can hear that in there. Uh, we had a little issue with the microphone, which you probably would have heard at the call to worship, and so uh, we were fumbling around at the soundboard to make sure that I had a microphone this morning, and I know that Sheldon is just going to be EQing it just a little bit so that uh, that echo uh, hopefully will go away uh, by the time I get to the sermon. But uh, please excuse us if we're just a little distracted. Um, I'm communicating with the soundboard at the same time as trying to communicate the announcements, and I'm not very good at multitasking, so um, uh, my apologies for that. But it really is good to welcome you this morning. Our ushers have now passed out the welcome tablet, so please do go ahead and sign in. Um, also take a few moments just to look at your orders of worship this morning. Uh, on the orders of service, you will see not only the outline for today's service, but also all of the announcements for today and for the upcoming weeks in our church. A busy congregation, uh, May uh, begins a series of all sorts of things in our community. Um, it is today, let me think, that we celebrate Cinco de, de Mayo. Uh, so that's today. Uh, we celebrate Asian Pacific Islander American Month. Uh, that's throughout this entire month. Month. Um, and it's also Plurism uh, Sunday. Um, and of course, today it is the uh, Easter for the Orthodox Church. Um, so many, many things that we observe um, as we begin this uh, May season. Inside your orders of worship, as I say, are the announcements. We have a few announcements for you this morning, so if you would just bear with me, uh, run through those announcements for you as quickly as possible. Uh, first of all, to remind you that our men's faith sharing group is today. Um, it will be at one o'clock in the Rosa Parks room. Uh, Tori uh, Topian will be uh, sharing his faith journey this morning. Uh, so please do join with him at about one o'clock this afternoon um, in the Rosa Parks room. And that room is just behind the sanctuary here. Also today, uh, we are having our Pride team meeting. If you would like to input uh, uh, something towards the Pride season, uh, please do meet with Reverend Dr. Pat Langlois. Uh, she'll be meeting at one o'clock in the Ryland Room uh, to talk about pride and to talk about our contingent this year. Uh, we are going to be having a booth in the festival, um, and so there'll be plenty of opportunities to sign up and to volunteer. Uh, we think it's really important this year to be in the, booth, in the uh, festival, uh, so please do help us and support that effort. Uh, show your pride. Pride team meeting today at one o'clock. 
This evening, uh, many of us will be joining with uh, Steve Harper as he uh, tells his story, uh, What's It Mean to Be Black and Gay in America by Steve Harper. Uh, and Steve, of course, you're joined by good company uh, this week as um, our NFL member came out. Um, and so um, uh, we know at least there's two black gay men in America. Um, <laughs> Uh, but he'll be sharing his story this evening at the Celebration Theatre. Um, entrance is $5, and I know I'm looking forward to being there and uh, want to invite you to be there with me this evening and to support Steve. Uh, if you don't know who Steve is, Steve, if you just raise your hand up, Steve will be sharing his story uh, this evening. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. We have a raffle going on. Uh, win two orchestra seats for Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, um, at uh, the uh, Pantages Theatre. Um, that will be uh, sponsored uh, by our archive committee. Um, and you can find out more about that in the courtyard directly after worship. Raffle tickets are $10 each um, or $40 for five tickets. And it's a fundraiser for our archive committee. And I know that uh, Larry Rodriguez, uh, uh, Asher, will be more than delighted to give you more information about that uh, for following worship this morning. The new Queer Faith Forum, uh, see how the Bible shows that you are accepted and loved and here Jesus is called to share the good news. Uh, the first and third Tuesdays at seven o'clock in the Rosa Parks room, uh, retired Presbyterian pastor Bruce Calkins and his wife uh, and others will be there this on Tuesday to share with you. Uh, so please do join with them on Tuesday evening. Our young professionals group on Saturday, May the 11th, between the hours of 9 and 1, uh, will be looking at Restore uh, Habitat for Humanity. If you want to know more about that, then please see Reverend Melissa Smithy this morning, um, and she'll be glad to give you more information as well. Uh, Pride is uh, just a month away and want to remind you that on Pride weekend our worship schedule changes just slightly. Uh, first of all, there'll be no worship services at church on Sunday, June the 9th, uh, but we will be gathering on Saturday, June the 8th. Um, so Saturday evening at 5 o'clock for worship uh, will be an old church worship. And then on Sunday morning, uh, we'll be doing an interfaith worship service on the Pride Parade route. Uh, that will be directly opposite, uh, directly next door, I should say, to CVS Pharmacy, uh, right down on Santa Monica and La Cienega. Um, and we invite you to share worship with us uh, on the boulevard on Sunday morning, but Saturday evening here at the church at 5 o'clock. Last week I talked to you about the table project and uh, I'm glad to let you know that we'll be inviting you to come to the table next Sunday. Uh, more information about that next Sunday, but please uh, know that you're invited to come to the table next Sunday. Uh, it's our opportunity to connect deeper one with each other, not just on Sundays, uh, but throughout the week with the use of technology. So uh, come to the table next Sunday uh, and you'll hear more information about that uh, next week. So, with all of that said and done, and with all of the other activities that will happen this week, uh, we are already exhausted, but ready for worship. Uh, so let's turn to one another now and offer a sign of peace, a sign of welcome. Let's invite Holy into our lives. God bless you this morning. Magandang umaga, that's good morning in Tagalog. May is Asian Pacific Heritage Month, and it's a celebration of Asians and Pacific Islanders in the United States. Much like black history and women's history, AP Heritage Month originated in a congressional bill. In 1977, Representative Frank Horton of New York and Norman Mineta of California introduced a House resolution that called upon the President to proclaim the first 10 days of May as Asian Pacific Heritage Week. The following month, Senators Daniel Inouye and Spark Matsunaga introduced a similar bill in the Senate. 
and both were passed. In October 1978, President Jimmy Carter signed a joint resolution designating the annual celebration. In May 1990, the holiday was expanded further when President George H. W. Bush designated May to be Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. May was the chosen month to commemorate the immigration of the first Japanese to the United States on May 7, 1843. And this was to mark the anniversary of the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad on May 10, 1869. The majority of the workers who laid the tracks were actually Chinese immigrants. In 1863, construction began on the Transcontinental Railroad, 1,776 miles of tracks that would form a link between America's west and east coasts. While thousands of European immigrants worked on the westbound Pacific Union Rail, there wasn't enough manpower to build the Central Pacific Line, which snaked through the rugged Rocky and Sierra Nevada Mountains. In 1965, Central Pacific officials hired 50 Chinese laborers to lay down a section of the track. Their work was so well done, they decided to recruit more Chinese men. In the end, of near, in the end nearly 12,000 Chinese railroad workers were hired to perform dangerous work that non-Asian men refused to do. I'm trying to be PC. They dammed rivers, dig, uh, dug ditches, and blasted tunnels through mountain ranges. Hundreds of men died in the job. The Chinese also faced discrimination because they looked different from the non-Asian workers. Although they often outperformed other laborers, they were paid less. Despite all of the hardships, the Chinese laborers never quit. Thanks to their hard work, America became the first continent to have a coast-to-coast -coast railroad. And this is why we celebrate API Month. Thank you. <clears throat> Scripture reading this morning, Jeremiah 18, 1 through 6. The word which came to Jeremiah from God saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will announce my words to you. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there the potter was, making something on the wheel. But the vessel that was made of clay was spoiled in the hand of the potter, so it was remade into another vessel, as it pleased the potter to make. Then the word of God came to me, saying, Can I not, O house of Israel, deal with you as this potter does? Behold, like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. invite you to be seated and if you would just join with me in a moment of prayer almighty holy and gracious and blessing one we thank you for this time that we have together this morning and we honor you in this time by being present in your spirit and so in that present spirit, God, we ask that you would weave our hearts and minds together so that we may be in unity of that truth that sets us free. 
a truth of God's favor, a truth of God's liberation, a truth of God with us. And so it is in that spirit that we now open our hearts and minds, O loving and gracious one, so that we might not only hear your word this morning, but we may be transformed by it, living out that truth in this world. And now, Holy One, I pray that you would bless and touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus, the risen Christ, in whom we pray, amen. So this morning I begin a new sermon series, and it's been a sermon series that I've been promising myself to preach for quite some time, uh, the gospel according to Avenue Q. Now, now for those of us who have been in theological seminary, uh, Q means something very different than Avenue Q. Uh, Q is a, a, a transcript or a piece of a tradition of scripture that has been handed down to us. Avenue Q is not that. Uh, Avenue Q is a play, a musical, uh, that hit off Broadway, then Broadway, and has been traveling across the United States and other places, um, and is something that I've heard the music of for a long, long time. Although it's only just recently that I actually saw the musical. Uh, we saw it all together, or those of us who were able to make it just a few months ago, um, over at uh, Western and um, uh, wherever it was, just over in Los Angeles. And uh, we got to see that together. And I'm sure since then, some of you have been still thinking, what on earth is the preacher going to do with the music and the gospel according to Avenue Q? I've preached lots and lots of sermon uh, series in my time, uh, mostly out of Scripture. This is the first time that I've chosen to preach on a musical. And I want to tell you, I have been a nervous wreck all week uh, trying to make sure that I have my thoughts together uh, for this particular sermon series, the gospel according according to Avenue Q. I don't know about you, but I think so often our secular music or our secular uh, opportunities give us such spiritual meanings and speak to us through music and through different ways in which we might hear and understand. Avenue Q uh, is about a young man who leaves school and is now trying to make his way in the world. And he's in New York and he starts off trying to find a home in Avenue A and ultimately finds that everything is far too expensive until he gets to Avenue Q. And Avenue Q is a diverse place to be. There are people from all over the world that have gathered in this small community in Avenue Q, and it retells the stories of those folks and how they find meaning in their lives. Now, it's also a very colorful play. Uh, there's some language in there that perhaps is not perhaps appropriate or too appropriate for church. And so then trying to find five songs that we might be able to either listen to or hear or even be present in church was also a little challenging for me this morning. So uh, the first song that uh, I've chosen it has its scripture reference, of course, from Jeremiah, and you'll probably realize why in just a few minutes. Uh, but um, before I get into the word, uh, we're going to hear the first song, I Wish I Could Find My Purpose. And uh, I know that our soundboard and uh, everyone else is ready for it. So let's let's go. Purpose. It's that little flame that lights a fire under your ass. Purpose keeps you going strong, like a car with a full tank of gas. So what's mine? Oh, look! <clears throat> Here's a penny. It's from the year I was born. Oh! It's a sign. I don't know how I know, but I'm gonna find my purpose. Gotta find out, don't wanna wait Got to make sure that my life will be great Gotta 
Okay, that'll be enough of that one. Um, so we'll get to see more of that. We've, um, we're, we're, we're dealing with technology here and sometimes that uh, just moves. But the whole song is about how do you find your purpose? Do any of us feel like sometimes we're trying to find our purpose in life, trying to figure out what it is that we were made for, what it is that we were created for, what it is that we are trying to find our purpose in life? Uh, how many of us find or trying to find our purpose? Uh, it's uh, kind of interesting. It's one of those things that I think as a people, uh, especially those of us from a Western civilization, have been confronted with all of our lives, all the way from kindergarten, all the way through to high school and even beyond, trying to find our purpose. We believe that we have been created for a purpose, created for something, a destiny, a purpose in our lives. And even, even as children, it's reinforced in us that we must find our purpose. Now, I know that we have some educators in our congregation this morning, um, and I know that uh, you too are those who try to help young folks find their purpose. Uh, and, and, and certainly when it gets to our uh, going to college and, and beyond, uh, we're trying to find that one thing that we truly believe we have been created for. Uh, even in the scripture, uh, from Jeremiah, the reading that came for us from this morning talks about how God crafts us in the potter's hand, creates for us, makes us, and in some ways talks about the purpose of Israel, not just of those ancient folks, but individually creating them in the potter's hand. And every now and again, as scripture tells us, that potter's hand, that clay has to be thrown out and started all over again. Finding our purpose. Talk about when we leave school and people talk about our careers. What are you going to do? How many of us still hear people say, what are you going to do when you grow up? What is it that you are going to do? What is your purpose? Finding your purpose in life. I don't know about you, but I have to say that for, to talk about finding our purpose, I think sets us up for a little bit of disappointment or perhaps even sets us up to always think about what is our purpose without just engaging in life in the here and now. If we're always just thinking about what is our purpose or what is our future going to look like, how do we remain in the very here, the now? How do we remain just enjoying the moments of our lives? Finding our purpose. The whole of Avenue Q talks about how we find our purpose. And these folks who are integrating their lives, one with each other, are thinking about finding their purpose. Now, Scripture tells us that our purpose is to be in relationship with God, to be in relationship with the Creator, to be in relationship with the created. And many of us have abdicated that relationship from the created to the relationship with the world, to a relationship with our own selves and a relationship with our own egos. Created for a purpose means that we are created within the potter's hand just to be who we are in this very moment. How many of us could really just sit with that and think about how we are created just to be who we are right at this very moment? Not thinking about a future, not thinking about what is our life's destiny, but just sitting with this very moment and knowing that we were created just for this time, just for this moment, just for this experience, just to be traveling across the waters from South Africa to be sat in this congregation this morning and to enjoy this moment. So often we're thinking about a future or, or perhaps even thinking about a past and regretting some of the issues or the, or the moments from our past rather than just being and enjoying this moment. I, I think about, uh, I, I look over at Jim this morning, I see him with his parents this morning and I think about how just enjoying that moment of being with his parents this morning, not concerned about whether he's pleased them or disappointed them by his life's choices, but just being present this morning. How many of us could really just get out of our heads about where is tomorrow and just be here and enjoy this very moment? We are created to be in relationship with a God who is dynamically in relationship with us and who is not disappointed by our life's choices but is very present with us, just pleased that we are here this morning, 
finding our purpose in life. I think, as I said, I think sometimes we are set up for failure when we're always thinking about what is our purpose, what is life's meaning. The reality is that those of us who follow Jesus, the Christ, our life's meaning is to be in relationship with God and to allow that relationship to determine who we are, what we are, where we are, and where we are going. Not to be so concerned about career or fortune or fame, and let's face it, we're in Hollywood, many of us are looking forward to fame, and not, not so concerned about those things, but rather just settling with who we are today. Now, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't have aspirations. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't want to better ourselves. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't want to, to find something in our lives that gives meaning. But there's a difference between finding a purpose and finding meaning in our lives. I wish that we could spend more time thinking about finding meaning in our lives than we could that we are determined to find purpose in our lives. What would it be like if we could just find meaning in every moment? Finding meaning that has settled itself into our being and into our bodies and into our relationships. Finding meaning when we find ourselves in conversation with each other. Finding meaning when we see something happening that doesn't look so good or doesn't feel so good. Finding meaning in our lives because in those moments, perhaps God is trying to speak through us and into the world. Finding meaning in our lives, even in the most mundane moments of our lives. Finding meaning and finding that which is of God. We spend so much time, so much time thinking abstractly rather than just being present in the moment and finding meaning in that moment. Now I know, Steve, you're thinking about this evening, you're thinking about how you can make that real for everybody else, but what would it be for you if you could just be in the moment this evening and know that in that moment, people are finding meaning for their own lives and finding meaning in the very present being. We are called to be human beings, not human doings. Finding that place this morning where we could just be in this present body. I want to encourage us to think about this gospel according to Avenue Q. This gospel of this young person who tries to find purpose and find purpose and looks back and wonders if there's ever going to be a purpose for them. A purpose for you. And find if we could find meaning in every action and in every moment meaning that speaks to our lives, meaning that will immediately tell us that we have found the moment that God wanted to be with us. Friends, this sermon series is going to be a little challenging for me. It's going to be more challenging because we're going to have to work out our technical side and make sure that we can get all that working together. But I want to encourage you to think about this morning, not just about purpose, not just about the purpose-driven life. How many of us read that book uh, when it first came out? The purpose-driven life. But to think about the life that has meaning. The life that can make meaning come alive. The life that comes, has meaning in everyday mundane experiences. And the life that has meaning that will transform us into seeing every moment of our lives as an opportunity to make connection with the God that we believe in. Purpose. It's that thing that we are all driven to. But meaning brings us back to this very here and now and helps us to see the meaning of being alive today. And perhaps the meaning for us just to be present in this church this morning is to reconnect with the divine presence of God that illuminates our path and shows us that wherever we are on that path, we can find meaning for ourselves. Jeremiah talks about the potter's hand. And sometimes, even when we think we found our purpose, we need to be thrown back into the pile and remade one more time. I'll close with a, a quick joke for you. And I tell you it's a joke because that means you have to laugh at the end of it. 
And I know sometimes our British humor doesn't always compute transatlantically. A story about a, a young man who was trying to find his purpose, found his purpose, thought that he was finding his purpose all of his life and was disappointed because he hadn't found his purpose. And in this middle age, he was sat under the tree in his farm. He'd been a farmer all of his life. And he was sat under his tree so disappointed that he hadn't found his purpose in life. And as he was pondering and speaking with God, he looked up to the clouds and he saw the letters GP in the sky. And he looked up and he thanked God. He'd found his purpose. God had revealed his purpose to him. It was said to go preach. And so he went to seminary. And he got his ed education together. He got his Masters of Divinity. And he got his first job. And he was the worst preacher you could ever think of was never able to put two words together, was not able to stir people's emotions, was not able to bring people into a relationship with God. He stumbled over everything and he believed that God had told him this was his purpose. He'd seen GP in the sky go preach. He'd done everything that he was supposed to do and he died and went to heaven. And he met with God in that final moment and thought, I really need to ask God what on earth did God think he was doing telling him to go to seminary and then to go preach. He was the worst preacher he'd ever met, never had encountered, he'd not done anything. And so he spoke with God and he said, God, you said, GP, go preach. I followed your directions. I did everything that you wanted me to do and you disappointed me. I thought this was my purpose. And God looked back at the young man and he said, I didn't mean go preach. I meant get up and go plow. Thank you for laughing. Friends, if he could just have been under that tree and enjoyed the moment and found meaning in that moment, you and I together in this church and in this community need to find meaning in all circumstances of life. And if we find our purpose out of our meaning, that's fine. But finding purpose before we find meaning is perhaps not the white ray wound. May God offer to us this morning a gospel according to Avenue Q to find meaning in our lives today. Amen. Let's pray together. God, we embrace your presence in our lives and because you are present in our lives, we already have meaning. And in that meaning, we might find purpose but we are called this morning to be in relationship with you and to find the potter's hand in our own lives. To see how you, by finding meaning within our everyday circumstances, can use our lives to bring hope and healing to the world, to bring hope and healing to ourselves. So may we hear this message this morning and find meaning in all things that we do, the mundane, the ordinary, and the extraordinary moments of our lives. May we find meaning in all things. Now, loving and gracious God, I pray that you would take the words that have come from my mouth and not allow them to return to you without offering us a message of truth and liberation. And instead of running after our purpose, May we succumb to the potter's hand this morning that invites us to find meaning in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.
name is Vianney Ramirez Roseboro, and I have the privilege of teaching you a small lesson in higher law. You know, I've had the ability to be a problem solver with regard to helping individuals in their legal matters or legal crisis and even financial crisis in figuring out how to be better stewards of our funds. In that journey, I've seen some patterns. Those patterns include my questionnaire, what do you spend on cell phone? What do you spend on groceries? What about eating out? Then we get to tithing and charity. And a lot of individuals that have been having financial strife, interestingly enough, don't have the practice of tithing. And I immediately say, ah, that's the problem. And they look at me and I say, it's higher law. You know, we can continue to live in a mindset and, and even reality of scarcity, or we can shift things, shift things and be and accept the abundance. It's interesting how we, one can go to a retail store, Walmart or wherever, you name it, and $100 is hardly enough for that shopping. Yet, we can foolishly come to worship together and feel that $100 is so much for purposes of tithing. MCC does. MCC gives. MCC is. You know, each and every dollar that you contribute has a purpose, has a meaning. I urge every single one of us to be consistent about our giving, for goodness knows that it will flourish. We will continue to clothe the needy. We continue to be those hands that feed the homeless. We continue to pro provide services here for families that need from our food pantries. MCC, our church, does. Every penny, every dollar has its purpose. Thank you.
Heavenly God, we thank you. We thank you and we accept that your will be done through this, these offerings that we gather in your name to further your work, Lord God, asking for this bounty and blessings to continue to grow. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. pray. God the Almighty, you bless us with all that you have created. You teach us to swim in the bright crystal water of life. You cook breakfast for us in that eternal city. You open your heart to us and will never close its door. We worship you. Jesus Christ, Lamb of God, you stand at the door, your hand on the knob, your coat over your arm, ready to go away. Yet you do not leave us trouble-hearted, but fill our emptiness with your peace. We praise you. Holy Spirit, a God-sent gift, you come to our defense when we are falsely accused. You rescue us from the schoolyard bully who always picks on us. You sit by our beds and comfort us when the nightmares of life keep us awake. We open our hearts to you. God in community, holy in one, we sing for joy to you, even as we pray with all people as Jesus taught us, saying.
we can learn of God's love, but how hard it is to actually live it. The world distracts us with easy choices while we know how intentional we must be to love one another. Join me in a moment of silence as we confess the times we have not been open to the love of God. And now we open our hearts to God, saying, You you promise promise a a new heaven heaven and and a new earth, earth. so So create new spirits and new new lives lives within us, healing God. God. Your spirit, living deep within our souls, can can teach us faithful ways. Your Your word whispers to us of mercy, your hope, your hope, your your love. In our midst, the Holy Spirit teaches us we all need to, what we all need to know, gives us what we need in order to be faithful and fills us with peace. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Great prayer of thanksgiving. May God be gracious to you. And always to you. People of God, offer our hearts to the one who saves us. We open our hearts to the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end of hope, life, life and and grace. As God's people sing for joy to the one who is with us, we we join all creation in lifting our praises to God. So with those who have been called home to you and with those who continue to journey your way, we join peoples in praising you. remember his promise to always be with us, as we celebrate his saving power among all nations, we speak to that mystery we call faith. For on the night that Jesus was to be taken from us, he gathered with his disciples, taking the bread from the table. He blessed it, and he broke it, and said, this is my body given for you. Eat of it in remembrance of me. Likewise, following the supper, he took a cup from the table. Some say the cup of Elijah the prophet. He blessed it, and he offered it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you, and in doing so, remember me. Here at this table of grace and wonder, where the simple gifts you have prepared are set aside for sacred use, your spirit is poured out upon them and your children gathered in this place of prayer. As we eat of the bread broken for us, we feast on the promises that one day pain will be no more, that our tears will mingle with the waters of life. As we drink deeply from the cup of peace, we are filled with the joy of your grace. And hearing the cries of those around us, we go forth to serve them with your hope and justice. And when the first things have passed away, When we wander down the streets of the New Jerusalem, we will find you waiting for us, our sisters and brothers gathered together around the table of glory and wonder, where we will sing our praises to you forever, God in community, holy in one. Amen. Amen. So at Founders MCC, like with MCCs all around the world, and the people in their homes, we celebrate an open table. That means you don't have to be a part of this church or any church. The table was set by Jesus for every single one of us. So it's our tradition to take a piece of bread and dip it in non-alcoholic grape juice, place it upon your tongue and offer you a short prayer of blessing. You can take and dip and serve yourself. You can have your server do it for you. Um, We just ask that you let us know because it's our desire to be of service to you. And we also ask that you would follow the lead of the ushers. 
So if I can have the servers, the acolytes, and the ushers please come forward, it's time to keep the feast.
This morning I feel I've found my purpose, to find meaning in every moment of my life. And so it is. Let's rise in body and spirit as we close worship in song.
Before we close worship this morning, the flower today are dedicated in loving memory of uh, Carmen J. Cruz by Gil Cruz to our mummy and friend who will always be missed. You have been there for us your whole life, and we love and admire you so much for the person you were. You are a rock. We love you always, your children. And today's hospitality is sponsored by Bayahinan the Filipino Ministry Study Group for Providing Hospitality, which will be in the Hunter Room directly after worship today. If you would like to dedicate flowers or uh, provide hospitality, please see Reverend Dr. Pat Langlois this morning. And now into God's gracious mercy and protection, each and every one of us is given. And the blessing of God known as Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and evermore. Amen. Go in peace. participating with us online you are an extension of this church's membership ministry our extended fellowship whether you're tuning in from los angeles london tokyo or zimbabwe wherever you are in the world we are so excited to embrace you to hear from you and to pray for you all of the people you've just seen in this broadcast not just the ministers and the choir but every person sitting on those pews we are here for you so please why don't you connect with us interact with us. We have four ways you can do that. Telephone, email, Facebook, and Twitter. And all of those links are located at the bottom of every webpage of our website at mccla.org. With your help, we can not just continue, but expand and reach a greater number of people with God's love through this ministry. Be a video angel amongst us by supporting this ministry through our donate link located just under the support menu in the upper right corner of any page of our website. Your participation is very important. And I want to invite you to write to me and let me know how I can be in prayer and praise with you. Even though you are not here in our worship center, you are still a part of MCCLA. Email me directly at revneal at mccla.org. May God bless your life. And I look forward to welcoming you back many, many times to MCCLA and our weekly live broadcast. You 